Do I even need to explain? A word to all you reviewers out there, if you have to release a video explaining why one of your videos was bad or make a top 10 list of the worst videos you ever made, chances are you're probably not as good as the reviewers you think you are. Yeah, you guys, if you make a video acknowledging your mistakes, that automatically makes you a bad reviewer. Do you even realize how stupid that is? Let's drop the ham for a bit, shall we? There's this increasing perception that I'm one of the most arrogant, egotistical people in the fandom. While most people are aware that I'm deliberately playing it up... Let me ask you this. What is the point of putting on this egotistical behavior and character when you know people are most likely gonna get mad at you for Oh, I don't know, as a form of entertainment? Plus, why does it matter? His videos get more likes than dislikes anyways. Because, yeah, you pretty much are an egotistical bastard. And you're about as much of an egotist as Voice of Reason is. And God knows that guy isn't a good reviewer, considering he gets terminated off of YouTube and better. What's with your personal vendetta against Voice of Reason? I mean, sure, he's done some pretty bad videos in the past, but that's no reason to outright hate him. Also, how do I know you're not just pulling the hoe, oh, I'm an egotist because that's my character act out of your ass in order to save yourself from being the actual egotist that you are? Because it's the character that he portrays in his videos to make them more entertaining. I really don't see what the problem with this is. One viewer once called me the Jim Sterling of the Brony community, which, quite frankly, made my day. I would like to call you the wannabe Yahtzee of the Brony community. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, that is the worst fucking insult I have ever heard. Even toddlers can come up with better insults than you. Now I'm going to laugh at your joke, While another was driven to an hysterically terrible attempt at a takedown. Did you see that smug Pinkie Pie look he used as a response to that video? Yeah, egotistical character my ass. It's a picture of Pinkie Pie smiling. It doesn't prove that anyone's egotistical. And in that video, he actually did point out some of your bullshit. Also, I find it ironic that you just barely glance at this video, yet you false flag my video when I give you criticism on your little buddy Josh. Can you give any proof that he flagged you? Screenshot? Anything? Also, smug takedown? Your whole attitude in this video is smug. Welcome to the commentary community where we make baseless claims and don't explain anything. And also, I'd like to point out your hypocrisy by saying that your opinion is the top opinion and every other Brony reviewer is stupid who has a different opinion than you. So yeah, like I said, hypocrite. I'm sorry, but when did he ever state nor imply that his opinion was the top opinion? Plus, even if he did say that, how would that make him a hypocrite? Because your explanation of how he's a hypocrite is very vague. Do you even know what the word hypocrite means? Oh, I have no intention of stopping. The ego and ham has been one of the more enjoyable things about doing this series. So apparently your ego is so big that you're gonna say fuck you to all the people who hate your egotistic attitude. No, he said he wasn't going to stop the ego-based persona. Are you even listening to what he's saying? To that end, let's beat a dead horse by counting down the top 10 worst videos I've ever made. So apparently making a top 10 list of the top 10 worst videos you ever made is beating a dead horse. That is one of the stupidest statements I've ever heard. How is that one of the most stupidest statements you ever heard? You never explain anything! The whole time I keep this dull, flat, almost whispery monotone. This is mostly because I was staying with friends when I first started the In A Minute series, and I was recording in the early morning when people were still sleeping, so I was trying not to wake people up. So why couldn't you record it at a time when everybody was awake or when everybody was out of your recording space? Oh, I don't know. Maybe he had stuff like, I don't know, a job, and the only available time he had to record was early in the morning. That shouts laziness. Yes, it's laziness, because he records at the only available time he can record. A lesson I learned quickly for future videos and speaking as loudly and clearly as I could, this one fell so flat I actually wrote and produced Boastbusters the same day just to apologize for it. This proves that you suck at reviewing. Yeah, you know guys, I'm just gonna cut off here just to say something completely irrelevant and stupid and not counter-argue what he's saying. And also, you gotta love the third-party content match on the video. Kinda like when Boss Spawn, aka Jerry P. Falls, you fly my- You're still talking about this? I mean, it's not like you reiterated this enough already? Single joke to drive an entire video. Once again, proof that you suck at reviewing. The only reason I actually wanted to do the last roundup in the first place was just for the spite of skipping over the derpy footage entirely. So you're pretty much saying that video was pointless and you only did it just so you could skip over the footage that made the last roundup any good of an episode. Yes, thank you for repeating what he already said. There's maybe one good joke in the entire video, and I don't even say anything during it. Let's be honest here, even if this song is one of the biggest fucking earworms imaginable, it's still a good song. Yes, that's great, but how does this counter anything you said? Because it doesn't. Number 8. The audience is the problem. It's no surprise that Glass of Water takes inspiration from both the big picture and the Jimquisition. And ripping off Yahtzee. Seriously, you're not hiding behind that. You're ripping off Yahtzee. Seriously, just go watch one of his videos. He almost copies his exact same speaking style. I'm sorry, but who the fuck is Yahtzee? Is that some sort of game? <gasps> Can I play? Second of all, you get your inspiration from movie fucking Bob? After his rant on Anita Sarkeesian, I couldn't even take that idiot seriously anymore. 
He didn't say he liked Movie Bob, he said he took kind of an inspiration from him. Coupled with that, the video itself is just needlessly aggressive. I've said before that an audience doesn't respond well when they're listening to a speech that comes across as insulting them, and yet that's exactly what I did. And not to mention that you insult Digibrony, the Living Tombstone, and Fanworks for no fucking reason. So, the satirical joke videos are not meant to be taken seriously. It's like Gamergate, when you're trying to say one thing, but your language and behavior say something completely different. <laughs> hey guys, I know if I'd sing a piece of crap relevant song from last year. Am I cool now? I couldn't hear what you were saying because for one, your mic quality is shit, and for two, you were blowing into your fucking mic. And while I've been a big supporter of focusing on what someone is saying rather than how they're saying it, that just doesn't apply here. Why do I get the feeling Shadowstar1224 is gonna pop up at any moment? And why are you mentioning old bandwagons from the past that have nothing to do with anything? Number 7. Frozen in 9 minutes. How is something as simple as editing so easy to fuck up? The biggest problem with this video is that the clips that set up each individual joke go on way too long. This video could have easily been 5 or 6 minutes had I tightened up the editing and cut a lot of the jokes that were simply junk, and too many of them rely too much on film critique itself to really land the way I intended them to. If you can't even get something simple as editing right, then you really suck as a reviewer. He messed up the editing in one video. One video, how does that make him a bad reviewer? The most egregious is the Bambi joke that relies on being familiar with the Nostalgia Critic in order to get it. And bad comedy is just the worst, because there's only so many times you can say, that's not funny. You know, for someone who doesn't want to reference a Nostalgia Critic, you sure did reference his opening statement in the Master of Disguise review. What, you're not even going to show us a clip? Not one clip? Ugh, come on, man. Frankly, I'm quite ashamed that I got paid for this. I'm ashamed you got paid for anything. No, you! Number two, Digibrony in three minutes. It's actually because of this video that Feely Vanilli- It's Feely Vanilli, dumbass! Why are you making such a big deal about this? You mispronounced a simple word, big deal. And Fall of the Crystal Empire ended up being some of my best work. I beg to differ. It's no secret that I can't stand Digibrony's work. Very few people can at this point. Granted, I fucking hate Digibrony too, but can you at least explain why you and a lot of other people hate him? Why would he need to? That would be completely irrelevant to the video. All that I ended up doing was making increasingly mean-spirited insults. And this is the main reason why I fucking hate Ball Spot or Jerry P, whatever he prefers to go by. He acts like the biggest fucking egotist and acts like he knows better than everybody else and he pretty much insults every other reviewer or any piece of work by the fandom. You can't really tell if someone's an egotist by tone of voice or the insults that they are using. By your logic, I can easily call you an egotistical prick. The only thing I learned from doing this was that if I genuinely disliked something I was about to riff, I should never make a remark on how bad it is unless that remark is in and of itself funny. In fact, this was one of the reasons I wanted to start doing Glass of Water in the first place. The video itself was way too negative and had no jokes in it. Jay, this is what we call accumulating the negative. We pretty much put out only all the flaws in the video. You don't need jokes in order to settle it out, just like a YouTube commentary. You don't need to insert jokes if you're trying to insult, if you're trying to point out the flaws in a video. Yes, but jokes can make a video more entertaining. You can be downright serious if you wanna. Jokes are not required in a review or a commentary or whatever. It's in a fucking stand-up show. Yeah, you know that thing that happened with this mic? That wasn't my editing software. You know, if your mic's going to randomly glitch out like that, maybe you shouldn't do commentary. Just saying. If you wanna be a jerk, fine. Be a jerk. But don't pretend like you're storming the gates of Mordor when all you're doing is spitting off the overpass. I'm pretty sure that's called trolling, my fellow dumbass. Not all quote-unquote jerks are trolls, you know. And besides, he was referring to himself. They accuse directly of monetizing their content, and they don't. Instead, what I'd been seeing was a combination of content ID flags and adware plugins. If this doesn't point out this guy's sheer stupidity, I don't know what will. Yeah, you guys, you know, let's not explain why he's stupid. Let's just pointlessly cut off and call him stupid for no reason whatsoever. Pardon me if I caused you any ear rape. That last part was just him rambling on a bunch of shit trying to rip off Yahtzee and looking for words in his thesaurus to slap in his senses to make him sound smarter. Yes, and repeatedly calling him egotist for stupid reasons because that makes me sound so much better. Anyways, that's all I have to say on this video. Boss Bond, I still hate you and I'm still baffled as to why you falsely flagged my video. It's too bad he never shows any evidence to support his claim. And a message to Rhino Mills. I hope this makes it for my commentary on Lacey Green. Yeah, I really don't see how making a shitty commentary will make up for that.